As the hours pass, the reality becomes less believable. New York has been devastated by this terrorist attack. The desperate rescue effort has gone on through the night. Emergency teams digging for survivors in the debris of the crumbled buildings. It is a torturously slow process. They work with the constant fear of other buildings collapsing. Hospital staff stand by in the hope that some of the thousands missing may be pulled out alive. There are reports of some buried in the rubble making calls from mobile phones. New York's Mayor Rudy Giuliani spent the night on the streets, barely able to comprehend what has happened to his city. Uh, it's terrible. I mean, the damage is terrible. The people are doing everything that they can to rescue as many people as possible, and this is going to be a long-term effort. So I just wanted to make sure that everything is here that could be here, and it is. So we just pray to God that we can save a few people. There is mounting shock and disbelief across America and increasingly cold anger and calls for revenge. This was an act of war by terrorists using hijacked planes as their weapons, planes packed with passengers aimed at the financial heart of America. Uniquely, the whole world was eyewitness to the second attack, broadcast live on television as the aircraft banked sharply into the World Trade Center, creating a fireball that burst through the concrete, glass and steel where thousands of office workers were at their desks. deal was only just beginning. As frantic attempts were made to evacuate the building, time simply ran out. Only minutes after the first tower collapsed, the second followed, imploding, cascading downwards in a wave of rubble, overtaking the office workers as they desperately scrambled down the smoke-filled staircases seeking an exit. An amateur video recorded the scenes at the base of the tower as the rubble hit the streets. I hope I live. I hope I live. It's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind a car. Get What's happening? Out! What's happening? Get the it's gonna come The affluent streets of South Manhattan were turned into a terror zone at the height of the rush hour. Emergency teams trying to evacuate the area were caught in the rain of falling rubble, which smothered and crushed everything beneath it. There was nowhere to hide. Mass panic gripped the streets as the crowds fled. We all started running. I, I, I ended up inside the Hilton somewhere. I was like trapped. I don't know where I was. I, I couldn't find my way out with all the smoke and the debris in there. I finally just closed the door behind me and covered it so no more smoke and debris would come in. And what I did was I called my wife and told her I love her. The streets of Manhattan are usually vibrant and full of life, but now an eerie silence reigns. No one yet knows how many have died, how many may still be trapped beneath the rubble. But there is little doubt now that many thousands have been killed. It's a terrible thing. It's like the world is evil, definitely. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Right here, right here. Just stay right here. Let's go. Here it comes. Okay. 
Come on in. Come on in. Thank you. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. World trade. You got did the phone company building got hit. Everything. <laughs> Devastation is an understatement. I mean, just walking and staring at this, that something like this can happen in 2001 is the scariest thing that you can ever think of. The loss of life, we were here and people were just jumping out of the 90th and 100th floor, one after the other. It, to even say this and to see this is, is you, you just have to see what you're talking about. It, it's beyond, beyond comprehension. America has never suffered an attack like this one. And even with emotion still so raw, thought is now turning to the reasons behind the atrocity. The president was at a school in Florida when the news was brought to him. The shock all too apparent. He vowed to bring the perpetrators to justice. The, street. the search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. Uh, do not hit anybody as you drive. Uh, uh, do we have any... Uh, I thought it was all right. But the attacks weren't limited to the streets of New York alone. Another hijacked aircraft was deliberately flown into the symbol of America's might, the Pentagon. More than 800 are feared dead. At one stage, fighter planes were scrambled to defend the airspace above Washington, as reports came in that another airliner was heading towards the White House. It was a day full of terrifying images, a day that will never be forgotten. Now America is counting the cost. This morning the rescue efforts continue as the political leaders decide what action they should take. The last 24 hours have shown all too graphically how vulnerable any country is to terrorist attack, even the most powerful. The strike against America was a strike against freedom and democracy right around the world. Michelle Clifford, Sky News. Now the pictures you're seeing are the first daylight shots from New York this morning. Now these pictures uh, came in literally 10 minutes ago, 11 o'clock our time here in the UK. That's 6 in the morning in New York. And those, that slow zoom that you're watching is for a purpose. You can now see the gap between two buildings. And in that gap, until the attack yesterday, stood the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. It could be weeks before it's known how many people died in those attacks. And sun is just about rising in Washington as well. We'll have more on that in a moment. So far, it is known that 266 passengers and crew were killed on board the four aircraft. Up to 800 people may have died in the attack on the Pentagon. At the World Trade Center, 385 firefighters and police are reported missing. There's no clear estimate of the total number of dead in New York, but the figure could exceed 10,000. Well, rescue efforts, of course, are still underway, both in New York and at the Pentagon. Well, across the river for us is uh, Keith Graves, our Washington correspondent. Nice. Uh, behind go. the scenes, of course, Keith, President Bush and his security advisers must be trying to work out what their response to this is going to be. Indeed, yes. I mean, Mr. Bush made it plain in his speech to the nation last night that there will be a response, and he warned not only um, the people behind it, uh, and I think he was pointing the finger at a group rather than a country that they, uh, that they